Hi, this video has two main goals. The first goal is to very briefly explain to you how MIDI controllers like Linstrument or the Seaboard or the Eigenharp use MIDI information to allow you to play per note expression and then to send that to plugins that are, they don't specifically support VST3 or any other special format, but that understand this MIDI data so that you can hear the per note expression as it is played by your fingers. In the meantime, I will also explain to you and show you how you do this in Cubase and leverage Cubase's note expression capability that very nicely fits this particular uh, model. So, in the beginning there will be no sound and I will show you visually with this application called MIDI Monitor what is going on um, in attempt to make this clearer. So, if you start with Linstrument, it will start in a particular mode that is called one channel MIDI mode. And that is the same as with any traditional MIDI controller where you use one MIDI channel. We have another mode here that is channel per note, is the second one down. Um, and that allows you to send out MIDI information over multiple MIDI channels. And in essence, each MIDI channel will be assigned to a particular finger. So let me show you what this looks like. If I put down this finger here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of MIDI information being generated. So you can see that channel pressure is when I push, push down or release my finger. And then if I move away from me or get closer to me, you get mod wheel. And then if I go left and right, you can see the pitch wheel. Now, obviously, all these three axes of control are active at the same time. So if I'm playing normally, you will see them being intertwined continuously. So each time, as you see, when I put down this finger, I get a new MIDI channel. So I went from two to eight and back to two. Now let's put down a second finger. What I did was I'm keeping this finger pressed and I uh, pressed firmly so pressure doesn't, doesn't change and totally to the bottom so that I'm not moving around the, 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 the mod wheel for this particular finger and I'm putting down a second finger. And you can see that that second finger now gets MIDI channel 3. And you get the same information, I can modulate mod wheel, pressure and pitch. And as I now move both fingers at the same time, you can see that both MIDI channels 2 and 3 are being used. But still, each finger is reserved one particular MIDI channel. So I hope this makes this particular model clear. Um, let's now see what this looks like and sounds like with Cubase. So I'm creating an empty Cubase project and adding an instrument track. And in this case, I'm going to use Uhe Diva. And it's the VST2 version of that plugin, not the VST3 version, if you were wondering. Now, the first thing to do is to change the way that Cubase is channeling MIDI data inside Cubase. So the instrument is sending out MIDI data, in this case, from channels two to eight, depending on which fingers are being pressed. It arrives into Cubase, and now since this channel for this instrument track is set to one, everything will be sent on channel one to the VST2 plugin. I don't want that. I want any MIDI channel to be sent directly through to the VST plugin without being changed. So by setting the channel here to any, this is exactly what happens. All the information, all the performance information from the instruments goes straight through Cubase into Diva to make sound. So let's pick a patch here that demonstrates uh, very, uh, in a very pronounced fashion these three uh, expression axes. So, what I have here is a synth sound. And as I move away from me, so use the mod wheel, I'm accelerating the LFO that modulates the oscillator. And as I press down, I'm, modula I'm modulating the resonance of the filter. 
And then obviously, if I, if I go left and right, I'm changing the pitch. So this now goes straight through. I can use this in performance. I don't have to set up anything because Diva very nicely supports uh, this channel per note approach or finger per MIDI channel or whatever you want to call it. Um, now Cubase has a unique capability that is called node expression. And it, this has been created so that you can leverage the VST3 expression parameters. But in this case, we're going to use it with VST2 and MIDI. And the only thing you have to do is to check this option here that's called MIDI as node expression, meaning that incoming MIDI will be used for node expression. I'm using CC1, modulation, pitch bend and aftertouch. Turning these on doesn't specifically uh, say to Cubase that you have to record them. It merely says that it has to display them when I'm actually looking at that recorded information. So let's now record the expression of one note. So this was one note. If I double click here to open up the MIDI editor, you can see three lanes here that correspond to the performance information that I recorded. So pitch bend here goes up at the end. After touch, I've been modulating halfway through, increasing the resonance and uh, mod wheel I've used to accelerate the LFO and decelerate it again. And then you can double click the key and start tweaking this expression, this recorded expression, so make it more pronounced or less pronounced, uh, fade it in and fade it out. And you can even go in and draw the curve yourself, if that's what you want to do. So let's delete that note again and record something from scratch so that you can see what it looks like when it's happening in real time. So you can clearly see here that each note has its three axes of expression being recorded separately. I can edit this separately, I can tweak it separately, or can even overdub, record additional parts. So almost, uh, you almost have the detailed expression of recording an audio performance, but with all the uh, editing capabilities of a MIDI DAW. So I hope this was useful. Uh, thanks for watching and have fun. Bye.